the next speaker is uh, Koizu Yang. Uh, he's going to be talking about super slow motion. He got um, he's a recipient of the Nvidia Fellowship and the Adobe Fellowship, and the work we're going to present ended up in an Nvidia product. So take it away. Thank you. Thank you for the nice uh, introduction. So um, we have a set of well-established researchers here in this tutorial, so I'm really honored to be here talking about super slow-mo, uh, estimating high quality, multiple intermediate frames for uh, reading pollution. So we've seen uh, fantastic, I mean, uh, uh, results using them for in the past two uh, talks. So here I'm going to talk about a little different uh, problem. We're given an input plane video, we're going to convert it to different uh, versions of slow motion videos like 8 times slower or even slower like 30 times, that's 36 times. So here's another example from uh, David's dataset. So this is the input and we have 8, eight, six, uh, eight times slower and 36 times slower. So we can see so Somo is able to generate a clearing of good, I mean, uh, in, uh, integration results. So, what is, how can we generate uh, super slow, mo uh, slow motion videos? So, well, given two input videos, uh, input frames, sorry, we need to generate a set of intermediate frames to form a coherence, uh, co coherence video. So, most of the existing approaches focus on generating just most single intermediate frame, which is good. We can apply this single uh, frame integration approach recursively to generate multiple intermediate frames. <coughs> but in order to do so, we have to generate the most in, uh, uh, intermediate frame and then others. So there is no uh, time order. And also there is another severe constraint that this is non trivial to generate um, an arbitrary number of intermediate frames using this kind of recursive approach because this approach, this kind of approach can gen only generate 2 to n minus intermediate frame because of the recursion. Say we can only generate 1, 3, 7. So by contrast, super slow mode is able to generate uh, intermediate frames in the correct time order, in the reverse time order, or all at once, any way you want. And also, super slow mode is able to generate arbitrary number of intermediate frames, so we don't suffer from uh, constraints that uh, recursive approaches suffer. So let me dive, dive into the details and show you how super slow mode works. So this is um, a basic idea. So we have two input uh, images at time zero and time one, and we like to synthesize an intermediate frame at time t. So how do we do it? Well, for um, each pixel at time t, if we could find this correspondence in input images, we can directly borrow the corresponding pixel values and uh, fuse them. And uh, sometimes we also have to uh, deal with the occluding or visibility reasoning, because <coughs> not all of the pixels at intermediate times that t can find correspondences in input images because of occluding. So, in addition to finding correspondence, we also need to predict the visibility weights so we can then adaptively fuse the, the input images. So, turns out finding correspondence has been well studied in computer vision, known as optical flow estimation. And also, there are a bunch of work using um, deep motion neural network to estimate optical flow, like FlowNet, FlowNet2, and also FlowNet from NVIDIA. So here, well, we have a slightly different problem. We need to estimate the optical flow or correspondence from an unknown uh, intermediate frame to input images. So there, here is a chicken and egg problem. So how can we break the chain? Well, let's take a look at a 1D uh, toy example. So hope James will like this toy example. So here, um, each column represents a time step, and each dot represents a pixel. This is for example. So we can use existing approaches to estimate optical flow in both directions between the input to images. And our goal is for a certain pixel at time, intermediate time step t 
we need to estimate its correspondence or optical flow to input images. Well, how can we do this? Well, in a, in a very simple way, we can borrow the information from, uh, the, in, from the optical flow between input images where, which we have access to. So how can we do this? Well, we simply take this optical flow, the red one, take the same direction, modify its magnitude, because we, we are considering a different time step. So we got a um, one-way approximation. Well, oh, sorry. We can do it in, a, in another way by taking uh, information from the forward optical flow. We, uh, again, modify its magnitude, but this time we, we reverse its direction. So now we have approximations in two directions. Next, we can fix them because we like to utilize information from both directions. And we fix them in a linear way. Uh, so the intuition here is the closer t, sorry, the closer t is to zero, the higher weight we give to the uh, uh, optical flow from zero to one. So now let's go back to the instantiation using optical, uh, using neural networks. So we have a neural network to estimate optical flow between input images, and we can then do a flow approximation using the way I just described. So note, this approximation is deterministic and parameter free. So it's just matrix multiplication. So we can easily plug it into an end-to-end trainable system. So now I've talked about how to find the correspondences uh, to input images, but it relies on an implicit assumption that the motion field or optical flow is smooth, meaning adjacent pixels have similar optical flow value, also the same in the direction. But we know in practice, optical flow is piece by smooth. smooth. So the smooth uh, assumption is broken near motion boundaries. So let's go back to the toy example. So here, the, uh, this is motion boundary. So the uh, optical flow, motion field, is not smooth uh, anymore. So let's take a look at what would happen for the intermediate uh, pixel. So we can see for pixel, for, uh, pixel at time t, we have two contradictory uh, approximations. So this is problematic. We can imagine by simply fuse them, we can get inaccurate estimation for the intermediate. <coughs> so how can we do this problem? Well, we have neural network. So we can have another neural network take, which takes initial flow approximation and the input images and also Walk input images using the initial approximation. So by walking, I mean moving the pixels to some certain positions defined by optical flow, because optical flow essentially is correspondences between input images. So we feed them into a neural network, another neural network, and we can get the fine optical flow. So let me show you some uh, examples to illustrate the, how this works. So we have two input images. We get some initial um, flow approximation. Then we get a refined version using optical flow. And if we take difference between them, and we can see the refinement is mainly around the motion boundary. So here, brighter means a greater difference between initial approximation and refined version. So this validates the, the motivation of using a, another neural network to refine the initial approximation. And also, quantum results show that this refinement is useful. But we call, in addition to finding uh, correspondences in two input images, we also need to deal with occlusion or visibility reasoning. So it turns out we can estimate pixel-wise visibility maps for, for um, in, uh, <coughs> input images as well. And then we can adaptively fuse um, input, uh, input images to get a synthesized uh, frame. So here's another illustration of how it works. So we have input images. And then here are the intermediate optical flow, I mean refined optical flow. And we can uh, walk input images using optical 
terms of I mean, walking means just moving uh, certain pixels to uh, other direction defined by O. And here are some uh, visibility maps. So here each pixel value is between 0 and 1. 0 means fully visible, so it is star. And 1 means fully, uh, sorry, 0 means fully invisible, which is star. And 1 means fully visible, which is bright. So if we take a look at the area right above the athlete's arms, because the arms are moving downward, so this particular area right above the arms is not visible in the first image. It's fully visible in the second image because the arms are moving downward. So intuitively, when synthesizing an intermediate frame, we should fully borrow information from the second image and do not trust the first image at all. So this is consistent with the prediction of visibility maps. So here we can see this black area means we should not trust the first image. And finally, we um, adaptively fuse the input images and the weighted by the, the visibility maps. And uh, here are vi uh, some view results. And we can see the uh, visibility maps are, healthy, are helpful for reducing the artifacts, especially around motion boundaries. So put everything together, we have uh, the, the pipeline of super normal. So it consists of two major parts. So in the first part, we um, estimate optical flow between input images. This is then approach, and we can, in the second um, stage, we take uh, in, uh, initial flow estimation, then we uh, output uh, refined optical flow and visibility maps at each time step. So because of the network's parameters are not dependent on the particular time step T, so this uh, approach to Sumo is able to generate uh, arbitrary number of uh, intermediate frames, even any t between zero and four. <laughs> so, I've talked about architecture. Now let's talk about how to train this this model. So this entire network is fully end-to-end -end trainable because each module is differentiable. So, to train this model, we uh, crawl uh, some slow motion videos from YouTube and also use some videos uh, kindly provided by uh, Adobe researcher Oliver. We use these two lists together to train um, uh, super slow -mo. So let's now take a look at what the loss function, uh, loss function looks like. So we have prediction, we have ground truth, those, those ground truth and linear frames. So the most straightforward way is to encourage the prediction to be similar to ground to ground to intermediate frames. So we define reconstruction loss comparing the pixel values. And also we consider perceptual loss. The idea is to compare the feature responses of predictions <laughs> and uh, the ground truth given by an image net pre-training model. So this perceptual loss encourages the uh, synthesized intermediate frame to look similar to ground truths perceptually in a, in a high level sense. I mean, those like those small textures, like those uh, subtle edges in, in these places look similar to ground truth. And also, we can define loss for the first part. Note here, we have no ground truth of the flow. We just take raw, in, raw input uh, videos to the network. So we need to add some constraint to the predict optical flow. Well, optical flow is essentially defined as correspondences in input images. So we can therefore encourage two pixels defined by the optical flow to have uh, similar pixel values. And finally, we have a smooth, smoothness loss for optical flow. So encourage two adjacent pixels to have similar uh, optical flow values. So this is the full loss, and we take um, weighted average of all loss terms. And uh, here are some um, quantitative results showing uh, effectiveness of different loss functions. And uh, we then evaluate super slow on some standard benchmark. So Millbury benchmark <coughs> is is to evaluate a single frame, um, with, uh, frame in, a video frame integration. So back then we won six out of eight test sequences, which is good. 
And then here are some real uh, uh, comparisons. So given to input um, sequence uh, in, in, uh, frames, we can generate the most sing, uh, single, uh, most intermediate frame. And we can see Super Sumo is able to capture the, the flying ball better. So here are some um, real results on multi-frame um, uh, frame integration. So X axis is our frame index. So here we are talking about 31 intermediate frames. And Y axis is the difference between uh, prediction and ground truth. So here we're looking at PSMR. So basically the higher the better. So we can see super slow the red curve, is almost consistently better than other approaches at each single step. And now I'm going to show some so this is the input sequence, and in the right is the uh, uh, information result using uh, super sumo. And I'm going to show a comparison to a commercial software. So turns out super sumo. Um, produces the last artifacts for the shadow over the ground and also around the or moving arm of the app. And he's Men's team has won just one medal. Xu Zhang Wei winning bronze in the high jump in 1984. And, and uh, here is the. Yeah, here's the. Uh, uh, Integration results using super slow so note how the shadow moves across the athlete's body. It's, it's, it's a pure. I can't stop showing off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, super slow mo. Super slow mo works well in most cases. Well, in some cases, it also struggles. So, can someone, can anyone guess where Super Sumo may fail in this example? Can you guess? Right. Yeah, I've heard that exactly. So, that is a very, very challenging part. Why? Because, <laughs> because that is only partially visible in one of the input images. So, it's very hard for the network to to find correspondences in, in images and then move and then walk the input image. So then we ask, uh, because human normal uses just only two frames as input, then we ask, do we human beings only use I mean, very, such short temporal contacts to make decisions? Well, probably not. We tend to use, I mean, to gather more information, to use longer range uh, contacts to reduce uncertainty. So we take this, this uh, the same idea to super slow mode to use multiple frames. And here we use four, and it turns out we can generate more appealing uh, synthesized result. So I, I won't uh, talk about details of this this um, improved super slow mode because of time uh, time constraint. But if we take a look at I mean the result uh, to generate uh, 31 millimeter frames, we can see our Recurrent or our improved super solo. So basically, we just in, uh, we inserted uh, convolution RLSTM uh, modules at the bottleneck of two uh, uh, stages of super solo to gather long range temporal context. And we can see our recurrent super solo here uh, does better and most of the time than uh, playing super solo. So here is a very uh, interesting uh, uh, result, at least for me. So this is a video uh, called Horse in Motion. This is the first uh, movie ever shot by human beings. So what if we feed this into super slow mo, or frequent super slow mo, what the results will look like? Well, it, it's okay, but not perfect. We, so the model still suffers, I mean, finding correspondences between I mean, the, the tiny or the, the thin structure like legs of the horse. And also this this is great uh, scale video movie, so it has the main uh, gap between the, from the training data. So it still I mean struggles. So this is just there's 
still a long way to go for uh, to solve value inflation from problem. So we still have a lot of work to do. So I've talked about um, using super slow mo to generate some I mean uh, intermediate frames to synthesize um, slow motion videos. But another triggering uh, intriguing part of this kind of content generation approach is that if we think about if we if a model is able to synthesize the, those intermediate frames well, it indicates the model has learned some representations about the motion patterns in the video. So can we utilize this learned uh, representations to some other downstream tasks? So optical flow is a natural byproduct of super slow mo since we have uh, uh, the first uh, the first module of optical of super slow mo is designed for optical flow estimation. So here are some um, estimations between input images using uh, super slow mo. So we can see the results are reason reasonably good. And if we take a look at quantity results, so super slow mo is better than other unsupervised uh, optical flow estimation approaches. And if we use more uh, frames, Q4, as input, the recurrent super slow mo is able to do a better job, but still worse than a uh, state of the art unsupervised optical flow. This perhaps is uh, because the state of the art approach uses some um, specific um, modules for optical flow, like cost, cost knowing, but for us, we just use plain um, convolution blocks. So, as I mentioned earlier, so in addition to the uh, synthesizing task itself, can we uh, transfer the learned presentation for another task? So here, uh, I'm going to talk about motion presentation, which is defined as uh, a, a binary classification for each pixel to separate the independently moving foreground from the from the background. So basically, we take uh, we between uh, uh, network to synthesize intermediate frames, and then we discard those layers associated for pitch uh, for frame synthesis, and add some new, add some uh, new classification layers for motion segmentation. So I, 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 I'm, I won't cover uh, technical details here, but here are some quantitative results. So we are better than uh, state of the art a tiny bit, but this is remarkable because other approaches like um, other two use um, relies on millions of manually annotated images for pre-training. For us, we don't need any single uh, manually annotated frame for pre-training. We use raw videos crawled from Vimeo and also use some synthetic data. So this is remarkable. So uh, some takeaway messages. So I've talked about SuperSumo. SuperSumo is able to generate arbitrary number of intermediate frames and also uh, Briefly talk about aggregating longer range temporal dynamics lead to better results. And uh, in the second part, I briefly talk about uh, using video installation as a proxy task. So I've shown uh, better uh, optical flow results, unsupervised optical flow <coughs> results, and also uh, some interesting uh, results for, for motion segmentation. So the work I just presented is a uh, collaboration between my uh, uh, with my collaborators and also my mentors when I did internship at NVIDIA. So here's some uh, resources. So more uh, results and details of SuperSumo can be found in a project page where I'm able to release the, the initial uh, uh, implementation of SuperSumo, but there's a good third-party implementation that uh, gathers a lot of attention from the community. And also a few recipe including code and pre-trained models of we have time for a couple of questions.